Welcome to Your Authentic Path to Powerful Leadership with Marsha Clark. Join us on this journey where we uncover what it takes to be a powerful woman leader. Well, Marsha, I'm going to confess right now that I've been super excited about this episode for a while. We have a very special guest, yes, Rebecca Bales. And uh, get us kicked off here. Well, I am happy to do that. We do have a special guest with us today, Rebecca Bales. She and I have known each other for quite a while. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But I think this is a really important topic for in the area around self-awareness and self-knowledge. And it all starts there. So thank you very much, Rebecca, for being here with us today. I am thrilled to be here today, Marcia. It's such a relevant topic and just so valuable to the work that you do helping other women and the work that I do. Yeah. I agree with that. We are a, a great example of women supporting women. Yes. yes, we are. Yes. So the title of today's episode is You One on One O One. I don't know why I want to say one on one. I've got I'm in a basketball mode, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's football season. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that. Zone defense. Um, okay. So no, our entire focus today is really fundamental or core to the work that you both have been doing for decades. And um, before you both even started your own business and the women's leadership programs you've developed, or you, Marsha, for writing Embracing Your Power, this foundational idea of truly getting to know who we are, who we are as a leader, who we are as a woman leader, and then as a whole, an authentic person, and discovering more about who that person is, how to explore, celebrate, and embrace who that person is. Can you tell I'm excited about this episode? (laughs) So so I love that we are talking about this today, as I said earlier. And, you know, one of the major emphasis in my work is that I want us to be our best authentic selves. And we can't be authentic if we don't know who we are. So that's the essence of your work, uh, Rebecca. It's the essence of much of the work that I do. And Rebecca is going to share some uh, work that she does, an instrument that many instruments that she uses in doing this work, because it is a very personal journey for each and every one of us. And I think that our listeners, each of you today, are going to have an opportunity to see some things maybe in a new light, to have some of those, uh, as we call them, aha moments, because that is um, that is going to be critical to even be beginning to think about how to be our best authentic selves in this leadership journey. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Rebecca? Absolutely, yes. I was just thrilled, Marsha, when you and Lumina came together because you're such, it's so compatible to the work that you're doing uh, by itself as a standalone suite of assessment tools, helping uncover the true self in others. And that's exactly what you do. And that's exactly who you are. And it's just such a, it's just as this match made perfectly together. So I I agree. I agree. So on that note, Rebecca just mentioned Lumina, which is Lumina Learning. Marsha, I'm going to let you give our listeners a little insight and background on your relationship with Rebecca, how the two of you have come together. Well, it it predates Lumina. That's right. (laughs) Right. Uh, I was introduced to you, uh, you had written a book. That's right. And we had something in common. We were both at that time fairly recent widows. And you had written a book about your journey um, following that time and and, and, um, really chronicling that time in your life. And I did a book signing for you at my house. That's right. The books, the, the, you know, who knows all the things that bring us together. And then you mentioned the work that you were doing then. And we came together, we kept hearing about each other, and we knew that there was a time when we needed to be working together. And we've done a lot of work since that time mm-hmm. from the standpoint of uh, I'm, I'm certified as a Lumina um, practitioner. practitioner. Absolutely. I get all the words That's right. right. Yes. Uh, as well as having uh, even uh, sponsored others getting certified right. as a part of the process. Because I think I believe in her instrument. I think it is one of the finest. There's lots of instruments out there. That's true. And there is a suite that you can talk about here shortly. But I do think that that there are some unique things about the Lumina um, uh, tools that deepen and broaden uh, what what we can learn about ourselves. And that's a big part of the reason I wanted to partner with uh, Rebecca. Awesome. Awesome. So I think the perfect way to open this episode's content is to say something that you say in the introduction of your book, Embracing Your Power, which is that we always bring a copy of the book 
for reference material. So will you set the stage and read those first two paragraphs as a kickoff? Yeah, and I am going to read them because I haven't memorized my book, believe yeah. it or not. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I had a vision of helping women achieve success based on their definition of success rather than what someone else wanted for them or from them. And to this day, ever, ever, ever and always, uh, to this day, my wish is for them to hold on to themselves, for us to hold on to ourselves in the process, staying true to who we are, rather than adopting either a male model or some uh, someone else's profile of what leadership is. And knowing that every person has both masculine and feminine traits, characteristics and strengths, and that what is the key is that women avoid placing restrictions on our paths to success based Based on how we've traditionally defined those inherent qualities. So the real message here is beware of self-created obstacles and know that each one of us is ultimately a complex individual capable of growing our strengths and diminishing our weaknesses. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's just that's the perfect setup for this entire this entire podcast here, because it absolutely aligns with people finding their authentic self. I mean, Marsha, you're just such a a prototype of that. You've done that work yourself. You're out there. People see that in you and they know that about you. I think they see that in me and know that about me because we've both done our work. We were sort of forced to do our work early on, like when we first met. That's right. Go through that. Yeah. So now we can help others and put that out there. And I think that psychometric tools help give us a snapshot into that. And and it's the beginning. It's not the the entire being, but it's the beginning of seeing yourself really as how you show up and who you are inside. And you take it from there. I I agree with that. And and. I think the emphasis on each of us doing our own work, we can only take others as far as we've been ourselves. Exactly. And I had a, a mentor once who said, you always have to put yourself out there hoping that others will come, you know, maybe not as far as you've been, but you always have to take a, another step further or, or two or three or five. And so I think that's an important part of this, that, we, that you have to do your work and, and the tools that you have and the work that we do helps women know how mm-hmm. to do that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sitting here with two like resourceful, authentic, successful women, two of the most successful that I know. And I want to take full advantage of your knowledge and suggestions regarding how we, our our viewers and our listeners can be our best selves. So let's start with some of the U101 basics. If I'm a listener out there, I may be wondering, where do I even begin trying to figure out who I am? So what are some of the first steps on this journey of self-discovery? And I'm going to start with you, Marsha, and then we're going to go to you, Rebecca. So I say this at the beginning of every program, and you've both heard me say this as part of the power of self-program, is that... um, The biggest derailer or showstopper to leadership effectiveness, and this is based on research, is our lack of self-awareness or self-knowledge. So I often say, I think I'm showing up to the world this way and the world is seeing me in a very different way. And so when that happens, uh, that's how I can get off track. And so there's two sides to this. There's one is me knowing and understanding my own defaults, patterns, habits, strengths, etc. And the other part of the self-awareness is knowing how others are seeing me and are they aligned. So that's what I think about when I when I come to this. And the other thing we talk about is that we're not here to fix you because you're not broken. Mm. Right. And that, I think, is a, an important part of the authentic piece of leadership. So that's the two things that I would bring to the table. Okay. I completely agree with that, too, Marsha. I mean, it's like we're perfect. Every single person out there is perfect in their own right. It's knowing who you are, knowing the baseline of what you start from, and then knowing when you need to maybe flex or adapt to a given situation or a given person. And sometimes recognizing our own strengths is hard to do. Yeah. It's one of the most difficult parts, and mm-hmm. being able to lay it and talk about it and put it out there. And I really hate when we talk about deficits and things mm-hmm. like that, because it's about, sure, we may have a weak, weaker area, and there may be a time we need to lean into that and develop that. Mm-hmm. But we really need to play from our strengths and just understand what the whole picture is, and then we can be true to ourselves. I love that. You get to a certain age, it's like, really, do I have to work on my <laughs> right. Can we just like go all in on what's working? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Rebecca, I know we're going 
going to discuss your Lumina learning assessments here in a little bit. But before we do that, I would like to know what drew you to the world of assessments and why is getting that self-awareness so important? Yeah, that's a great question, Wendy. And, you know, I was a psychology teacher, and that's how I started my career. Mm. I had my own life experiences. Marcia's spoken to one of them, which caused me to get into a situation where I needed to make a career change for myself and my children and my family. And so when I did that, I went to the corporate world, and I realized, wow, everybody's using assessment tools out here (laughs) to help teams and leadership development and individuals. And so that's what really got me entrenched in the psychometrics. I was already certified in several of them as a psychologist teacher and had led certifications in them, but I kept migrating to what I thought was the next best one. I saw the work it did for the clients, for the organizations I worked for, for teams and groups of engineers and leaders and attorneys. And, you know, I just saw the light bulb go off for people and how it made them a better person Mm -hmm. and made them more effective in what they did. And so every time I see that light bulb go off, I just get goosebumps. It's just great. We love light bulbs, too. And I have to tell you, I'm an assessment junkie. I mean, and I think you are too. I mean, yeah, like you said, sure. you you always were look at you knew some, and every time you, you saw a new one, you wanted to at least go explore and say, right. well, what does that measure, and mm-hmm. how can that help, and is yep. that better than, and you know, more insightful, and and different assessment tools measure different sure. things, mm-hmm. um, and, and and so I think that's a part of leadership and development, and more importantly, that self awareness piece. Yes. So if you could pick one of your most favorite assessment tools or most powerful or insightful, which one would that be? And whether that's an assessment or a workshop, you know, what was what is it and why would you say it's so powerful for you? I'd be crazy if I didn't say the low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> okay. No, and the reason I, the reason I say that is one um a lot of instruments, and, and I'll contrast it for a moment to the Myers-Briggs, because that's the one that mm-hmm. I think many people, the MBTI or Myers-Briggs, right. and that says I'm either an extrovert or an introvert. I'm either an intuitive or a sensing, and it's a either-or scenario. Mm-hmm. There's degrees, but, you know, it's, it's still an either-or. And what I loved about Lumina, and I say this to all my clients when I recommend us using it, is that... I get to be a bit of both because I we're mm-hmm. all a bit of both, right? Right. Um, and so I've got more extrovert than I do introvert. Anybody that knows me knows that. So, uh, and yet I have to own that introvert part of me and understand it as well. So that's one piece. I'm not an either or. I'm a lot of things, and this tells me how much of each I am. The second part I like is the three levels of persona. So the underlying, the everyday, and the uh, overextended. And uh, I often liken this to my underlying is who I am in the morning when I wake up before I have my first cup of coffee. That's right. <laughs> or, or put my makeup on and get ready to go wherever it is I'm going. And that's sort of that true core me. Then the everyday is who do I, what do I need to dial up in my underlying or what do I need to dial down? down to to show up and be effective in whatever environment I'm in. And then the overextended are what are those triggers that put me into a stressed or high anxiety state? Mm-hmm. And how do I understand what those are and what how that overextended shows up? And what do I need to do to manage those triggers more effectively to not put myself in those overextended places when I don't want to be? Exactly. So that's why I love the Lumina spark instrument Mm. you want to elaborate on that well i mean i think marcia described it totally and completely (laughs) accurately and i think that not just doing that for yourself but i think what i see when organizations embrace lumina uh, at an organizationally wide level is um, a a tool that doesn't stereotype people Mm. so when we get into stereotyping or typing as in some of the typing instruments then we start to get into this and sometimes it isn't meant to be but it just starts creeping up into the culture we get into this well you need to be a this to be a head or if you're not a this you're not going to be suited to do that and so it just Lumina is highlighting what everybody is uniquely Mm -hmm. and independently of anything else that they may have a strength in and so with that people can take and embrace their true self their true value of what they have to add and not be limited by a box or a type. 
Yeah, oh. That's why I, I think it's a beautiful assessment, suite like of assessment that. tools. I like that. So we're, now we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about l- lack of self-awareness and the fact that that is one of the, as you said earlier, right. one of the biggest derailers for leadership, leadership effectiveness. I'd like to hear you both elaborate on that a little bit more. Well, they've heard my, my, my piece of it. So what, what yeah. 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 So I think, you know, lack of awareness, you're not going to really know what your strengths are or how you're showing up. You have a default kind of gut or instinctual reaction to things that doesn't always serve you or the parties involved to the highest degree. So if we can learn our baseline, if we can learn what we're probably apt to do in a given situation and the flags that tell us, oh, my gosh, I'm getting triggered. You know, as you mentioned Mm -hmm. earlier, what triggers these automatic responses, then you can take a pause. You can take a three deep breaths is what we say, because the brain actually releases itself from being gripped around whatever it is that's triggering you. Mm -hmm. And you can step back and make a different choice in that situation. And in that pause, while you're doing this is your power. So Mm -hmm. that's when you're really stepping into the power to be the best you can be in that given situation. And I, I talk about that as being thoughtful. And intentional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And and we, we, we might even think about it as, remember when it was when your mad count to 10? Yes. Well, that yes. was really, it, yes. we didn't understand the psychology or the brain operation as That's it related right. to that, but that really was the pause that allows us and, and to, to take back, if we feel like we're losing our personal power, yes. take it back and, and provide that thoughtful and intentional response. Exactly. Well, I want to talk about something that's kind of in that lack of self-awareness blind spots the term blind spots is used a lot Mm -hmm. in workshops what are they really and how does someone go about identifying their blind spot and then you getting clear on what that is. Yeah. So so I want to use another model. And for those who are listening, I'm going to try and describe this, <laughs> which is always a challenge for me. That's why I have to have a whiteboard or a flip chart in every training class because I draw all the time. But this is something called the Johari window. Mm-hmm. And I have a copy of this in front of me, so I make sure that I say all the words right. So if you go look it up, that, that I have credibility with it. <laughs> but um, so this, I, I love it. Johari is J-O-H-R-I, if you want to go look that up on the web because, or the internet, because there's a lot of stuff. H-A-R-I. H-A-R-I. Yes. Yes. That's right. Because uh, this is the name of, it was crea- the model was created by Joseph Luft and Harrington Ingham. Joe and Harry. Got it. <laughs> yeah. so, Love it. I just always That's thought right. that was so funny because it uh, sounds yeah. like such an exotic word, J-O-H-A-R-I. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal. It's a two by two. So there are four quadrants. And the top left-hand quadrant is known as the known to self and known to others quadrant. And so that is also referred to as my public self. I know this about me. You know this about me. So it's all out there for all to see. So that's how that comes to be. And and it, not only public self, but also the arena. It's like I'm performing in the arena for all to see. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything that you would add? Top left. Top left. Okay. Yeah. Anything you would add? No, I think you've got that. All right. Then the top right-hand corner, (laughs) uh, Wendy is my um, Vanna. Yes, yes. (laughs) Is not known to myself and known to others. And so when I think about, I, you know, I'm thinking this and others are seeing me this way. So others can see things in me that I cannot see in myself. And that's where the blind spots come. Okay. So that's the essence of blind spots. So again, I, I totally agree. And I also think that's a great spot where assessments can come in to yes. help because mm. it can unfold these blind spots. And then once they're made aware to you, even though you may say, and I see this all the time, people say, that's not me. I don't see that in me. And I always say, you know, sit with it a little bit, take mm-hmm. it back and just sit with it. And they'll always come back and say, oh, two weeks later, I saw it, mm-hmm. you know, because now once it's been brought to your awareness, yes. you start to yes. see it. That's right. I cannot not see it. That's right. 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 That's what it right. is seen, it cannot be unseen. And I, I also think about, um, and you also say, sit with it and check with others to see what they're seeing in you. Because again, that goes back to, they can see things in me that I can't see in myself. All right. Then the bottom left-hand corner, 
Wendy Point. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here is not known to others, but known to me. So this is often referred to as the facade quadrant. Mm. So we have the arena, we have the blind spots, now we have the facade. So a facade is a fake front, right? I mean, that's what the word facade means. And it doesn't mean that I have to tell everybody everything about me. There are things that I will keep private by choice, by intentionality. At the same time, though, there are things operating inside of me, in my head, in my heart, in my defaults, in my habits that I'm aware of, but that you may not know. And therefore, you can make up all kinds of stories about it mm -hmm. because you're applying your own projections and experiences to the table so anything you would add to that absolutely i mean i just think that it's it, that's a really important quadrant i think because we all do have things that we maybe should just keep in ourselves. there our inner thoughts our inner feelings they're for us as uh, so there are some things that it might be best if others understood more about us and it would take the relationship to another level mm. so, but that's a personal choice it's a personal choice and it's it's an end of it. You may not make the same choice all the time. That's right. I may share something with you, but not with you. Right. And and I think that's a part of what we have to also consider as we think about ourselves in relationship to this quadrant. Yep. Yep. And then the bottom right is uh, the unknown quadrant. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> and those are the things that can often come back and haunt us. And even this is a place where I think the assessments can help us, too, because I didn't know. You didn't know. But, oh, that's what's happening in this scenario. This is why I keep finding myself in this situation that maybe I don't want to find myself in. So thoughts. And I think that's that's really at the core down underneath our conscious level. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, if an assessment can pull at that, I think there's a different one than Luminous Spark. It's another Luminous assessment that we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, it gets at the core of that. And that's what when triggered, you can have responses that you're unaware that you would even have. And I think about that in the underlying persona. I mean, that's the one that is that deeper down, yes. that if I don't understand that part, it's hard to know what to dial up or dial, dial down for effectiveness in our daily lives, because I don't even know it's there. That's right. Yeah. 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 So does anyone want to share anything from their facade window or their blind spot window that they discovered? Either one of you. Um, you, you know, when I think about blind spots... Um, until I became really aware of uh, how, how few boundaries I set and that I was such a people pleaser, uh, I just always thought it was being kind or, you know, being helpful or being supportive. And as I did more and more of these assessments as a part of my corporate life and, you know, and then subsequently into the leadership development world, that was the big aha for me that from a blind spot perspective, mm. that my kindness and over, uh, almost overuse of kindness, overuse of support. You know, I, that's why I love the quote so much. Givers need to set boundaries because takers rarely do. Right. And I was one of those givers and I didn't set boundaries. And I found myself in resentful places of I do everything for them and they do nothing for me. <laughs> and do they not know and appreciate and all that. So I, you know, sure. come up with all these stories. So for me, that was a big thing that okay. I found out through assessments about setting boundaries and being a people pleaser and a giver all the time. Okay. Rebecca, blind spot for you that you uncovered. Covered. Wow. So a blind spot for me, my first one that I got to when I took my luminous spark was reliable to hesitant. And I remember sharing it with my daughter who was working with me at the time. And I said, this isn't me. I don't see this. And she was like, excuse me. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is you. And not only is it you, but you've actually gotten a little better about it. And so I was like, no, it's not. But that was one of the cases where I put it away for about two weeks and boom, here it came. And I saw it and I couldn't pull the trigger and create a deci decision and action on something because I was too emotionally tied into it and I was overwhelmed about that. So I just shut it down. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized there it is. So reliable to hesitant. What does that mean specifically? It means you're hesitant to make decisions? It or? means you can get hesitant because you're so um, in tune with being reliable and making an accurate uh, oh. choice and action that you are going to deliver on anything you take. So you just decide you can't take it. As take a Southerner, I call that baked in a squat. 
Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you probably, that's one of my grandmother one. used to call me baked in a squat. Uh, that's one I haven't <laughs> oh gosh, heard. That is interesting. <laughs> okay, right, total before, sidebar on now, that one. Now, now we All know right. a lot of facade information about yes, yes, we well, yes, yes. Okay, so... We've covered we've covered kind of the, the that the, I'm looking Johari at my notes that, here. Yes. The, we've covered a lot of the that we talked about facade. I want to talk about public real quick. Also, I've got that here in my notes for for us to talk about. How do y'all feel about your public personas, and how did that or the, those aspects of your personality of your you? I will tell you that for me, it's the power of transparency. That, that for me is the public arena self is that the more I can let people know who I am it it prompts me to want to show up in that mm-hmm. way you know it's the if you say it out loud in front of other people now you got to live up to the promise right and so for me it, that public facade is about transparency and I would dare say uh, in in today's um, professional world it's about building your brand mm. and knowing what your brand what you want your brand to be and showing up consistently so that others see it in you and you see it in yourself. That's really that's really mm-hmm. insightful, Marsha. Yeah. Um, so for me, I would say that I have an empathy for people that I think comes through. Mm-hmm. I can feel it anyway, just a really deep caring on what their needs are and what, what they're trying to do and how things affect them. However, on the flip side, I'm extremely purposeful and tough so I'm surprised sometimes because I think I kind of mask that tough. I know I don't the purposeful, but I, I, but I mm-hmm. think I kind of mask that. And I will have feedback that, wow, you know, you were really tough on that. Right. <laughs> but it's the combination of the two I think I've become known for and that I think other people see in me. I definitely see it in myself. Okay. Well, the courage to say tough things, the courage yes. to have yeah. tough conversations, yes. the courage to, and it's all in the spirit of wanting to support the other person and thinking that what you have to offer is going to help them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's Absolutely. the part that comes through loud and clear. And that's the hard part too, because you don't know, they have to be ready for it to take mm-hmm. the two. And so it depends also on where they are in their journey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or how you can help it th- help them through it. Well, what's the old adage of meet your client where they are, not where you are? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. So facade, this one down here, feel in the lower left for those who are not watching my hands. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to ask y'all to say what you think your facade is. So, what are some examples of facades that come up in women leaders? Uh, let me think about that a minute. So I, I think the facade of I can't be a woman. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I can't, I can't be. Uh, I have I to be the boy display, in the room. I can't display also. my feminine self. Right. I mm-hmm. can't bring this idea forward. I can't speak my mm-hmm. truth in a world or a, you know, a, a, a conference table of strong masculine, you know, whatevers. I think that is a part. And it's. um it, it is a part of what I know about myself because I hear it. You know, right. the question comes up, the comment comes up, the thought appears, and yet I'm not going to let them know what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's what, what it triggers in me or okay. what it mm-hmm. prompts in me. Okay. For me, I think it's the facade of... Um, of self doubt, so mm. I think that there are in, in, in the work that I've done with organizations globally in the women's programs at that level, most of them. The question mm-hmm. is, when was the last time you doubted yourself? Mm-hmm. And the senior leaders who are in the room say, um, mm, "Yeah, exactly." Ago, like maybe right before I walked in the store, <laughs> right. and so we all project this air of confidence, which mm-hmm. you do believe m- many of us do have. Right. But inside, there's that little bit of self doubt that yeah. I think comes with us, and it's great to acknowledge. That And I think it's important for other people to understand we all mm-hmm. navigate through this life with right. a bit of that. Yeah. Right, right. Well, before we move off the Jahari window as a whole, I, I want Marsha to talk real quick about this author, Martha Beck. Yes. Um, and her uh, commentary on blind spots. And one of her blog posts is titled Getting Rid of Your Blind Spots. Mm-hmm. So 
Talk, yeah. talk to us about that. Well, and again, I'm going to refer to notes because I, I don't want to butcher right. anyone else's work. So uh, pardon my reading, if you will. So so one of the things that she suggests that, that I really found most fascinating is that you already know what's in your blind spot. It's just that looking at it makes you extremely uncomfortable. Right? Mm. So that that in and of itself, right? We've all had those, mm. those moments. Um, so in that same blog post, she shares a mindfulness exercise. Exercise. And this is, you know, I'm all about the tools, right? So this is what I think about is tools. And I think it could be really powerful for our listeners to help them as they, you know, ease themselves into being more open or receptive to the feedback of others, which is where the blind spot feedback is so important in that. Um, and to be more gentle with, <laughs> you know, not be so hard on ourselves um, and, it, and and really accept what might be coming at us from that regard. So the exercise that she sets up is as kind, and this is, um, I'm quoting now, as kindly as you can, ask yourself the following three questions. And I went through this exercise recently. What am I afraid to know? Oh, that's that's huge. that's huge. I mean, what am I afraid to know? Because if I name it, now I got to deal, deal with, with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what am I afraid to know? And I, I would add about myself. The second question is, what's the one thing I least want to accept about myself? Uh, and the third is, what do I sense without knowing? And we did a whole episode on intuition mm-hmm. with LaRue Epler. And this is the... I know, but I can't name it. I can't touch it. I can't label it. And in the essence of the first two, I can't, I don't want to because it's too painful. Right. Yes. And for our listeners, that LaRue episode is not out yet, but we have recorded oh, oops. it. Okay. Yeah. Coming, no. <laughs> yeah. Coming, coming to a theater near you That's very right. soon. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So, you know, an important instruction that Beck adds to this exercise is she warns that whatever comes into your mind, do nothing about it. Not yet. And even if you feel uh, a hint of some new realization, that's the first big, huge step. More insights will arrive soon. I love that part, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, uh, coming to a theater near you. And the kinder you are to yourself over time, the more likely you are to experience major breakthroughs. And, you know, just for our listeners, and um, the blog post is from her website. So if you want to know more about this, uh, her name is Martha Beck. So I'm going to spell it out. M A R. T H A B E C K dot com. And, uh, you know, I, she strongly advises her readers and, and followers to seek honest feedback. And, and she puts it this way hunting for your own blind spots. I even love that, oh, yes, yeah, that terminology. Too. Hunting for your own b- blind spots, like trying to examine the back of your own head, is much less efficient than soliciting feedback from others. Mm-hmm. And this process combines... Th- this is another analogy that was provocative to me. This process combines the attractions of strip dancing and skydiving. <laughs> uh-huh. and, and she goes on to say, making you feel completely exposed, yet energized energized by the sense that you could be catastrophically injured. Now, just get that combination, yeah. exposed and catastrophically injured, and and know how valuable honest feedback can be and how much precious time it can save in one struggle to awaken. And I still have to force myself to go looking for it, but when I do, I almost always benefit. And, and I love that she says, I don't care how long we've done this work. There's always more work for us to do on Mm -hmm. ourselves, not just in supporting others, but really in continuing our own journeys. Mm -hmm. Thoughts, Rebecca? Oh, I just think it's powerful. I think the the questions, the three questions you asked were huge. And I think that question about fear, you know, fear can be conquered, but it's that fear that drives many of us in our blind spots and our reactions that we don't understand Mm -hmm. where they're coming from Mm -hmm. is because we're tapping into that fear. So it is something good to explore, I think. Yeah. And, and would you agree, given the psychology background that you have, there's an emotional maturity that 
this addresses and that comes into play strong. And can I accept this without going off the deep end or being overly dramatic or, you mm-hmm. know, oh, my world is ending kind sure. of thing. So, I mean, I think that emotional maturity is a big part of that. Would you would you agree with I that? I completely agree. You have to be ready for this. Yeah. You? Yeah. yeah. And I love the phrase, I'm going to pull this out of what you just said, my struggle to awaken. I mean, yes. that that mm-hmm. feels almost like that strip dancing and skydiving <laughs> Im- imagery. Right. You know, you're like Cinderella or, or whoever, Sleeping Beauty, waking up into who I really am. Right. Yeah. So um, we, this is where some of these assessments or approaches to development I think for me can get a little confusing. I mean, as a perfectionist type A personality, I also know I'm trying to figure out what's the right answer, yes. not necessarily mm-hmm. what's the, the answer that I'm, uh, you know, that really resonates or is correctly describing me and my uh, attributes. So I spend, I can also find myself spending a lot of time running around trying to get feedback from other people and that may or may not be helpful. So how do my, I guess all of that to say, my question is how do we, our listeners, our audience here know where to spend our time and what to pay attention to with that feedback? Yeah. Would you, would you like to go first on this? Sure. One? I can go first on that so you know I think it I I always come from the so what factor Mm. so you take in all this information and just like even our as Marcia knows what I'm talking about are overextended and what triggers us to have reactions that might not be too pretty out in the world Um, if it isn't affecting you if it isn't derailing your success if it isn't causing injury and harm to others then so what you know, mm-hmm. so maybe that's one that we're just becoming aware of. Mm-hmm. If there's another one that we could say, wow, I could have had a much better outcome. I could have been more effective. I could have led my team in a different way. I could be a more powerful female leader. Then let's work on that one. Mm-hmm. That's one to take and embrace. So mm-hmm. that's the way I navigate. I, it. I like that. And m- mine is about what am I getting by displaying a certain behavior and what am I giving up? And and, and again, not at everyone else's expense with the larger you know, goal or purpose in mind and service. Uh, and so I always say you want to get more than you get than you give up, right? And, but, but recognizing that every choice we make has that component to it, the get and give up. And so I think it's uh, getting clearer about what those things are. And it goes back to the power of the assessment. Is it going to give you some insights into that so that I get clearer about what I am getting from it and what I might be giving up? in addition to so it's a both and kind of thing right right okay so now I want to get into the details of the Lumina Spark tool so because I know this is a one of your fundamental differences in your company and for those of our listeners or viewers who may not be familiar with Lumina Learning Rebecca tell us a little bit about the Spark assessment first and then you can talk about all the other tools in the suite please sure so Lumina Spark is our personal behavior slash um, personality assessment. Mm. So we look, um, Spark looks at personality through the lens of behavior. So instead of saying, well, how do you energize yourself, whether you're extroverted, introverted, we look and see what actions and behaviors do you have that are extroverted behaviors and what do you use that are introverted behaviors and to what degree on both sides. Because as Marsha mentioned, she has an introverted side to herself that she also needs to acknowledge and Mm -hmm. nurture and understand how she is being when she's presenting that side of herself. So I think that's the beauty uh, to spark and also, as Mar- Marcia mentioned, doing this in the three personas of the self. So it's a very holistic assessment. We yes. don't see a human being as just a flat, one-dimensional person. We see human beings as three-dimensionals. You have your preferences, which are your underlying self. You have your everyday self, which is what you're tuning up or tuning down to go out and navigate the world. And then you have your overextended self, which often happens when we aren't looking. You know, mm-hmm. it's when we get under stress and pressure. But we really are a combination of all three of those parts of us. So Lumina does that. Lumina Spark uh, really measures scientifically and empirically each one of those. And they're measuring 24 behaviors in those three personas. So Mm. nothing's inferred or assumed. Uh, A typing tool will say, well, if you like this, you're this type of person. Mm -hmm. Um, Lumina Spark says, how often do you use these behaviors and to what intensity? 
And I want to just add something there too, Rebecca, that I like about it is the fact that your point of I have to know about and nurture my introverted self, the older you get. And the more times you've been around the block, (laughs) and I've been around a couple of times, me too, Uh, yes, (laughs) is that I'm beginning to tap into all of me. So this idea of my best authentic self is all of me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so knowing when to use and tap into my introverted self, that self-knowledge is powerful in helping me be more effective. And being more intentional and thoughtful about how I choose to respond, how I choose to initiate, how I choose to interact. And so I think that's another piece of this that's really important is that me understanding all the pieces and parts of me is is a huge power tool. (laughs) Huge. And not being limited into one to be stuck in one area, but that you have energy that's flowing all over into all areas and acknowledging that. And I think that this is what Spark does for the individual. Mm -hmm. But I think what Spark offers us is the latest in research, the latest Mm -hmm. in psychometric research that's out on the market. It also offers us the latest in digital technology for tools to wrap around the assessment. So it's not just the assessment one and done. It's ongoing learning tools and digital access and apps for your phone and your in your iPad or your tablet. So uh, incredible just, resources. Very. Wow. Very much so. OK. So for our listeners who may want to learn more about Lumina Learning, the Spark tool or take one of your assessments, where can they find you, your team? Yes. So they can find my team at info dash US at Lumina learning.com okay okay now, now tell them what your role because you yes have, you have a huge role in this, yes. in this company yes called Lumina. So, i do so i'm actually, actually my i own this company this part that operates under the lumina learning umbrella so right. i am the global partner for lumina across the u.s and i actually work in all of the americas but my remit is really across the U.S. Wow. That's my focus. So. Wow, wow, wow. And, and I, I want to say one other thing. The people who do the kind of work that you and I do, I mean, your, your, your very gracious comments at the beginning about two successful women. There's a lot of people that try this that don't make it. Right. And and I, I do want to credit you with, you've been around a long time. We've come through the ups, the downs, the financial debacles, the dot-com right. bubble burst. I mean, there's been a lot of things going Pandemics on. Pandemics and everything. And all of that. <laughs> And the fact that we're still standing here talking about That's right. what we do in our line of work, I think is a pretty incredible thing. It so is. I just want to give you a lot of credit for building this capability inside this country and even this, you know, Americas. Thank yes. You. Yes. Thank yes. You, Marcia, same to you. Well, Rebecca, we like to wrap up each episode with two or three key takeaways. So what two or three key points would you like everyone to really hone in on on what we talked about today? Well, I think uh, number one is the importance of uh, creating self-awareness and deeper self-awareness than we may have at the, any point in time. And that that journey is ongoing. It mm. doesn't stop when you're 50 or you're 70 or anything. It doesn't stop when you retire. It is just uh, the best leaders that I've ever seen are sponges and they want more and more information right. on themselves and on others. And I think that's key. I, do mm. too. I, I, I like that. And I agree. I I learn something new all the time, and I love that I learn something new all the time. Um, I think what I'd like our listeners to to take away is, if you even just envision that Johari window, if you were going to document yourself, so this to me is a self-awareness exercise, what do you think goes in the top left-hand quadrant of the public self arena? What do you think you know about yourself and others know about you? and, and in the spirit of Martha Beck's, we may know our blind spots without knowing our blind spots. What do you think might be some of your blind spots? And I would say, even if you can't name the blind spot, can you name times when things are not quite right or not, mm-hmm. or they're a little off or it didn't turn out the way I thought it would turn out? And can you see any themes or patterns in that? And then this facade stuff, getting really clear about what you may or may not want to share and under what conditions you might share it with whom. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the unknown stuff is notice when you have more questions than answers. So what are those circumstances? And then think about how assessments might help you fill in some of those blanks. 
And I'm, I'm also going to offer a little, I'll call it a housekeeping tip. Uh, keep all your assessments in one place. Mm. that you've ever taken if you can't I mean go find those put them all together because one of the things we use several assessments as both of you know in our programming and one of the things we do is we give a I'm going to I'm going to go technology on you a concatenated file which just means we combine them all (laughs) which means we combine them all and we we suggest you go through and read no matter what the assessment is measuring our preferences our personalities our conflict management modes or whatever all those things might be what are those things that keep showing up no matter what you're measuring? Mm-hmm. Because I think that's another power of the assessment tools. And I think that's another way to really go broad and deep to say, at my very core, who am I? And that to me is where a lot of our power lies. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, Thank you both for being amazing today. As always, Rebecca, thank you so much for being thank a guest on the show. Me. I'm yes, to be here. yes, thank yes. You. And for our listeners and viewers, thank you for joining us on this journey of authentic, powerful leadership. Please download, subscribe, and share this podcast with all of the women in your life and the men in your life too. Um, and visit Marsha's website at marshaclarkandassociates.com for details on the tools that we talked about today the Jahari window is in there on her website you can find that tool and look at it obviously you can find out information about how to buy her book Embracing Your Power and Marsha why don't you close us out well let me say also Rebecca uh, thank you so much for being here we've talked about this and said we were going to do it and now it's finally happening happening. Um, and and I really do know that our listeners can take away some really good stuff from today Um, anything that you would like to say before we do our final sign off. I would just like to offer your listeners a complimentary spark assessment if they want to reach out to us. Yeah. And so at the Give, email address that say, I say it again. Info dash us at lumina learning dot com. Okay. You want to spell lumina for them? L U M I N A learning dot com and please add in there that you heard about us on this podcast oh yay this is episode 58 (laughs) awesome that's great that's great so now uh, you talk about somebody who is willing to put put her money where her mouth is (laughs) and really try to create the awareness that that is really something so thank you very much for that uh an added benefit that I didn't know about. No, yet, this was a surprise. Surprise, surprise. Yay. Um, and I also just want to say there's no better example that I can think of. I started out with our partnership as being one of women supporting women. And I think you offering this to our listeners who are primarily women is yes. yet another huge example of that. So, to do it. as always, here's to women supporting women. <laughs> <laughs>